By the way, I, I know you can see me uh, chucking the water in there, but I've got my uh, sparge water to 75 degrees. Uh, I know you can just see me just shoveling it straight in, but that's because with the grain father we've got this lovely top mesh uh, set up so I can put the water in and when it's ready to filter through, as the water's already running through the grain bed, uh, it'll just take it through. So, you know, I can spread it around as I'm putting it on, but it kind of just sits in there. Now you can see as it's getting close to the top basket, I'll grab another. And just spread it around and then it will sit like that when it's ready to filter through it will so we completed the sparge there's 16 minutes left of the boil I've got 100 grams of citra and 100 grams of cashmere ready to go in they're going to go in a whirlpool at 80 degrees um, I've got protoflock tablet and a kilo of maltodextrin going to go in in just a second and I'm going to put the counterflow chiller on uh, to start sanitising that. So nearly at the end of the brew day we've got counterflow recirculation on the go. We've got the hot water waste going down into a bucket and I've got my hot spider in there ready for dry hopping. Well, wall pulling. Um, my temperature, I don't know if you can see it there. The top one. I'm going to 76. So I'm going to stop my recirculation now because I'm going to wall pull at 75. <laughs> Additionally, I've taken my post boil um, gravity sample. You can see the hot breaks quite well. That was probably about 80 degrees when I pulled it, so I'm letting it go for 20 degrees before I take my average um, gravity reading. Almost reaching time to tidy up now. The whirlpool's finished. I'm recirculating again, uh, just whilst I get everything ready. Uh, temperature's down to 67 degrees now. Hot water bucket filling up, and we've got the chronicle ready to go. So, time to start transferring some fluid. I felt the air rise up in me, kneel down, clear the stone of this. I wonder how well you can see. Inside Michelle, I wait and breathe. I felt the air rise up in me, kneel down, clear the stone of this. I wonder how well you can see. Inside Michelle, I wait and breathe. Go far! I love it! Hello YouTube. So this is the tasting of my uh, Citra and Cashmere New England IPA. Uh, it's got a lovely colour on it. Head retention's a little bit poor. That's because I've had uh, problems uh, with carbon. Um, reason for that is I had all sorts of hot matter. I was being hugely greedy, trying to get everything out of the fermenter and into the keg um, far too early. Um, it finished, but it hadn't finished its cold crash. Um, as such, I was transferring loads of hot matter um, up through the outpost, through the quick disconnect and all that sort of rubbish and trying to get it into the beer. In reality, I was turning on the tap um, and no beer was pouring. Um, anyway, separate video. Loads of citrus, as you'd expect. Um, 
tasting. Yeah, ace. Really, really happy with it. Maybe a little bit more bittering than I was expecting. Um, probably to do with the amount of hops, uh, hop matter and trub that I had left over in the fermenter, like I said. Um, the amount of sloshing it backwards and forwards in the keg I had to do, left it in suspension for quite a while and then mixed it all back up. So there's not the sort of vegetative um, undertones that you can get, um, you know, the undesirable edge um, from from hops like that. It just may be a bit too much bitter. I'm happy with it. I'm happy with it. All in all, it's the second uh, New England IPA I've done. Very happy with the outcome. Yeah, as you'd expect from uh, Citra and Kashmir, um, Citra has given it lots of Citra uh, notes. Uh, the Kashmir um, is kind of like uh, like a limey, lemony-ish edge, but there's really not much of it at all. Um, and that sort of gives a smoothness which takes you through the bitterness that I've already described. All in all, very happy with it. Um, I'd rather that it didn't take me so long to get it pouring all right out of the keg. Um, but in terms of the recipe, uh, the one kilo of maltodextrin that went into it, you can't really tell that it's there. Um, which is a good thing because you wouldn't want the, the beer to taste sweet. However, there is enough body there so that it isn't just all about the hops, otherwise it would just be thin, and it's not, there's a, there's a lovely body to it. Yeah. Uh, and the, the carbonation is good, uh, but it will give a little bit more to the beer as it's getting up to the correct levels. That said, there's a reasonable lacing uh, on the glass, so I'm pretty happy with that as well. Back again. I've been brewing off, off and on for about 10 years. Roughly, if you're watching one of these videos and you're thinking I'd like to have a taste of one of them uh, and you're brewing yourself, I'm more than happy to do swaps and shares, so please just get in touch.